Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me. We are going to take a look at a study by Henri Bertini, French 19th century composer. It's from a collection, Opus 100, of 25 progressive studies. Interestingly, Bergmüller's very famous collection of 25 progressive studies is also Opus 100. I wonder who got there first. And uh, this is number three, it's in D major. Delighted to be looking at it at the request of David. Thank you, David, for getting in touch. We're going to look at it hand separately, first of all, then we'll put both together. We're going to be discussing fingering options. You're going to have sight of my foot from time to time, see what my pedaling is doing, and uh, being aware of the different lines. Most of the melodic interest, of course, is here, but there are other little things that we may want to draw out from the texture as well. So let's start with the right hand. Start with the third finger, I think. Piano, we're told, cantando, singing style, projecting this line while still playing piano. And I'm thinking of leaning confidently into the key bed. One, two. Super smooth. So those little grace notes are just before the beat so that the C sharp lands on the beat. Thumb on the D and then a little gap. That's what that sign means. To then go up and land strongly on that A. Another little gap before we land on that A. I'll link it all up in a minute. And then off we go again. Notice that time we have the fourth finger to start the phrase. But swap to the third because it makes the grace note so much more comfortable. And that trill there, it's marked as a trill. But in fact, that's what we're going to do, that little decoration there. And although the last note has a staccato sign, it's not. We don't want a snatch thing. It's just saying, don't hang around. That's my reading of it. Let's put those first eight bars together. One, two. Second section now, longer second section. Um, and the texture thickens up. We've now got two notes pretty much constantly, haven't we, until the ending, um, at a time in the right hand. Let's have a play through. And those dots above those notes there, they're telling us, but it's all within a phrase. So it's not. I'm not hearing that, but I am hearing a sense of as if you're playing with a string instrument, the, the same bow direction, but just stopping the bow halfway along. We'll talk about the pedal in a minute, that's going to have an influence on this. Now this section, there are options. We've got this sort of parallel force thing. In this edition that I'm displaying on the screen, we've got, what have we got? Three, two, three, one, five, four. Hmm. I must admit, I don't like that very much. It's, you can see it's creating stress for my hand there. I prefer the fingering in the brackets there. Let's go from here. Nice and steady. Five, four. That works much better for me. In fact, what I think you'll see I'll do when I perform it at the end is get the fifth onto the F sharp. And it's because I want my hand to head down. So that's helping me do that. And I could even stay in that position. And jump the thumb at the end. Or get the fifth onto the E there. Doesn't really much matter. Landing there, let's carry on. 
we know this and those fingers do make sense there I think and we can play that I didn't dare but we can play that completely smooth and on those two keep the top line as smooth as we can Again, we've ended on fourth, haven't we there? Let's carry on. Before the beat, growing, gap, land, land. Some little decorations here. I'll make sure we can really hear every note. It's so easy to do. Something like that, where they're not quite clear. Try to avoid rushing. We know this. And the repeat. Let's have a think through the left hand, for now without any pedal, so that I can see, am I holding on to the things I need to down here? Okay, same tempo, one, Two. Hold on to that D. Of course, we've got to let it go towards the end of the bar because we need to play it again. So he's drawing attention the way he's notated it to that bottom line there. The fingering I'm going to end up using there. So we want to try and draw that out a little bit. Yeah. Hold on to that D. The fingering I did there for that last, those two bars. Yeah, my thumb heading up. I like to get my fifth to that G, but equally well. You could leave it the fourth. Again, I'm just, I know my hand wants to head up there. So I'd rather get it up there at that point, I think. And it's going to go up even higher. And there's room to hold on to that note, that's why it's got the stem going up as well. So we can hold on to the first note of each group of four there. Just a little bit. Let's carry on the next section. Second will be good there because we've got this scale. Coming down, I like the fifth on the A there. And through all of that, notice I was keeping that bottom line super smooth. Not easy to do. Let's just try it one more time. Perhaps watch the orange display to see if I'm doing it. One, two. So I'm holding on to the A, holding on to the B until the D. C until the A. Swap to the second. And this bit, what I've ended up doing is we've arrived three one two one two one five one because the fingering here is going to get my hand up when in fact it's about to leap down. So my logic is keep my fifth finger nearer to that E. And then this bar, again, I don't like that. It's creating stress, it works. But what, I might be tempted to get my thumb to that A. Let's just read it through what they've written. Whereas, I 
like to get my thumb to there first, and then we're and we're heading down the scale. Let's keep going. Same as before. And short at the end, but not super, super staccato. Uh, let's now put them both together and run it through steadily. I'm not really concentrating on tempo. As always, this is just a walk through, practicing it, giving myself time to think about it. So, hands together, same sort of tempo, and I will get the foot involved as well. And you'll see that my foot is, you'll see exactly what my foot's doing. <laughs> Here we go. One, what I'm thinking about when I'm pedaling is A, the, I'm taking on board what I'm hearing in this room here at this precise moment in time. I'm trying to make sure that the melody is super clear. I don't want it to be too fudgy. And I definitely don't want the harmonies to overlap. So in bars, for example, bar three and four, I'm going to be pedaling four times for, each, for that bar. Earlier on, we'll see, but it's probably only twice. Let's have a go. One, two. very elegant, um, beautiful melody, subtle accompaniment that's holding on to things where it needs to and using the pedal to help smooth it over as well. Beautiful piece. David, thank you very much for asking for this tutorial. I hope you found that helpful and uh, I've done a performance video that just takes it slightly quicker and I'll link to that down below too. Take care. Any questions, do get in touch. Bye-bye for now.